I invite you to open a Bible to Proverbs chapter 3 as we continue looking at what God's Word teaches us about what wisdom is and how we can obtain it in our lives. And as we begin to hear from God's Word, we begin with prayer. We pray for our own hearts and minds that they would be at rest and at peace in the Holy Spirit. We also pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ that they would hear from God's word what they need to hear and that they would follow the teachings of Jesus and the Holy Spirit in their lives. And finally, I ask that you pray for me that I would speak clearly God's word and proclaim the truths of who Jesus is as our Lord and Savior. Psalm 19 says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So Proverbs is this wonderful book that teaches us about wisdom, and wisdom is one of those things that we hear about, we want, we desire, but there's a lot of different definitions of what it means to be wise in the world. There's lots of different people that are smart, intelligent, very well learned, and throughout history, people have said, this person's wise or this person's foolish, and we begin to make up our own definitions of what is foolish and what is wise. And so as we look at Proverbs, we were trying to understand what does God's word say is true wisdom according to him, and then how do we live that out? In Proverbs chapter one, last week we looked at how Proverbs teaches us there's essentially two types of fools. Martin Luther used to use the analogy that you're riding along on a donkey and sometimes you fall off on the right and sometimes you fall off on the left. And as humans, what we argue about is who fell off the best, right? Was it smarter and wiser to fall off to the right or is it smarter and wiser to fall off to the left? And Luther's point was, doesn't really matter because you still what? You fell off. It doesn't matter. So Proverbs essentially presents us with this. There's two types of fools, and we'll argue to the death amongst ourselves who's the wiser fool, right? So one fool, according to Proverbs 1, is the person that always listens to the world. What we, sometimes we call it peer pressure, right? So whatever the cultural trends are, whatever the world says, whatever your group of people says and says, this is right and everybody else is wrong, and we just go along with it, Proverbs says that is foolish because you're going in the ways of the world. And in fact, in Proverbs 1, it says you've gone wayward. You, you've lost track of God's path for your life. And then the other type of fool is the person that's unwilling to admit that they're ever a fool. You're always right in your own eyes. You always have to win the argument. You can never be proven wrong. And what Proverbs says is it doesn't really matter which way you go, which side of the donkey you fall off. Either way, you are being foolish. And so the first step that Proverbs teaches us about how we can understand biblical wisdom and become wise is to admit that we are foolish. Sometimes we are foolish because we don't listen to God's word and we go the way of the world in whatever direction people pressure us and tell us this is good and this is wise. And other times we are foolish because in our own lives we are right. Right? Anybody ever muttered under your breath, if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself? Yeah, okay. Well, Proverbs is saying you are foolish in your own eyes sometimes because of that stubbornness that we have. And so Proverbs 1 tells us that the beginning of wisdom, the beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Lord. And what that means is that not that we are afraid that God will punish us or condemn us, but that we love him so much, have such a high reverence for him and his ways and his word, that we are afraid of dishonoring him, of letting him down, of disappointing him. And because we have that fear and such great love and reverence for him, our desire becomes then his ways and his word in the world and in our lives. So the first step to gaining wisdom is admitting that we are sometimes foolish ourselves. It's not just everybody else. Everybody else is foolish. <laughs> That's easy. 
beginning of wisdom is admitting I'm foolish and I don't always live in the ways of the Lord. And Proverbs chapter three is gonna reiterate this for us and then explain to us, well, how do I then, if, I, if that's wisdom, following God's ways, right? Um, admitting that I'm a fool and I need his guidance in my life, that's what wisdom is, following God's ways. Chapter three is gonna explain to us how, how do we understand his ways and how do we get that wisdom in our lives? So chapter three of Proverbs begins this way, verse one, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace, they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God. And then perhaps the most famous verse out of Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Now, why I read all of those together is it mentions the word heart multiple times, right? Bind these on your heart, write them on the tablet of your heart, trust in the Lord with all your what? Heart, okay? That's a theme, okay? Now, here's why this matters for how do we actually get wisdom in our lives? Because it's one thing to hear God's word. Isn't that good? To hear God's word, right? It's another thing to what? Memorize God's word. Anybody ever memorize part of God's word? Right? It's a good thing. When I was growing up in Lutheran school and Sunday school, we had a lot of memory work, and I was awesome at it, which led to me bragging about it, which is kind of the opposite of what God wants you to do. <laughs> That's a whole other sermon, though. Okay. But we memorize God's word, and we think, I've accomplished something because I heard God's word. I've even memorized it. But there's a difference between hearing God's word, even memorizing it, and then actually doing it, living it out, putting it into practice, right? And that's usually where we stumble. That's, that's usually where our foolishness as human beings comes into play. We can hear God's word. Oh, okay, that's great. Fearing the Lord, loving the Lord, his ways, not my ways. That's the beginning of wisdom. That's wonderful. Paul says, everything you do that is not done in faith is sinful. Now, that's a big statement. Everything? Okay. So here's my question for you this past week. Last week, you heard the word. It's all about wisdom, God's wisdom. It's about his ways and not my ways in my life. How many of you lived 100% wisely this past week? That you feel real confident about that? Or did anybody ever go wayward? Or did anybody ever think, I'm right, and I know I'm right, and I don't need to listen to anybody else? Right? So... You understand what I say that? Okay, we can hear God's word, we can even memorize God's word, but then to put it into practice in our lives, and that's what the idea of with your whole heart means here. Now, here's why this is also a call to listen to God's word for wisdom rather than the way the world speaks. How many of you have ever heard, either been on the receiving end, you've seen it in movies and stories, or maybe even uttered it to your friends when there was a big decision to be made? Right? How many of you have been faced with big decisions in life? And you're just like, I don't. And then someone tells you, what does your heart tell you? Or to listen to your heart. Right? Or, or sometimes you also hear, listen to your gut. Right? Sometimes we don't say heart, we say gut. Anybody have heard these expressions before? Right? And it sounds wonderful. It sounds super nice, doesn't it? Right? It's just like we're trying to, you kind of build up your confidence, right? Of <laughs> like, Oh, I've got this really big choice to make, and everybody tells me, listen to your gut, listen to your heart. What is that telling me? That I'm the wise one. I've got it all figured out, and I don't have to listen to what? Anybody out there, whether it's you or the Lord, right? Now, our culture, our world is obsessed with this idea of listen to your heart. Now, if you ever read your Bible sometime, you will find that the Bible teaches you to do the exact opposite. Both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, we are told the heart is full of all kinds of wickedness. Full of 
wickedness, not full of, you've got some really great ideas, right? Those are two different things. And then Jesus in the Gospels even says, it's out of the heart that comes all kinds of sinfulness and evil and wickedness and bad thoughts and words. So our world wants us to be foolish by saying, you need to listen to your heart. Go with your gut feeling. And it sounds good. And if we're honest with ourselves, we often go wayward in that type of foolishness. Of I'm going to listen to my gut, I'm going to listen to my heart, and nothing else. What we are doing when we do that is we're saying, I am the highest authority. There is no one and nothing wiser than me in this situation. It's arrogance. It sounds humble, but it's actually arrogance because we're saying, if I'm gonna just listen to myself, no one else. And then the proverb says, here's what I want you to do with your heart rather than listen to it. I want you <clears throat> to keep the commandments of God's word. Verse one tells us. And then it says in verse three, bind them, bind faithfulness and steadfast love on your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. So he's saying, put God's word, put God's commands, his ways of living in the world on your heart. And then on top of that, put God's faithfulness and God's love on your heart. Write them down, write the story of God's love for you on the tablet of your heart. And then verse five, Super famous, but you don't actually like it, and I'll tell you why in a moment. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. So Proverbs is telling us to do three things with our hearts that the world doesn't tell us. The world says, just listen to it, whatever it comes up with. How many of you have come up with a bad idea? Anybody want to admit that? And you're like, that was dumb. Anybody ever look back at your past and thought, boy, I really nailed all of it? Or have you ever looked back at your past and been like, I was a fool. Now here's what you do as you get older and older. You think I'm getting wiser and wiser. So I've talked to people that are older than me throughout my life and as, my pa as a pastor, right? And so when you're in your 20s, guess what you think? I was really foolish in my teens. I wish I could have done this or that differently, said these things are differently. And then you get you into your 30s and guess what you do? You look back at your 20s and be like, boy, I really didn't know what I was doing back then, did I? And then I've been told, <laughs> I've been told when you get to your 40s, you look back at your 30s and you do the same thing, and then you get to your 50s and you kind of look, right? Anybody noticing a pattern? <laughs> Every time we do the thing that the world says, we go wayward from God's ways and we go our own way, we listen to our own heart, we all have our own life experience where we look back and go, that was not a good idea. And then you ask yourself, where did that idea come from? Me, I can't blame it. I was the, the fool that came up with it, right? So Proverbs saying, stop following the way of the world that says, just listen to your heart and you be the wisest person. If you want to have wisdom in your own life, you need to listen to God. And he gives you steps on how to do it. Write his commandments on your heart. Meaning learn them, be in God's word. Ask him for wisdom. James chapter one says, if any of you are lacking wisdom, pray to the Father and ask him who is generous to give it to you. So even the New Testament is telling you here, if you want wisdom, if you need help in life and which way to go, which path to take because you want to be faithful to God, God's word says just ask him. Proverbs says learn his ways, learn his word. And it also tells us, learn about his love and faithfulness to you. See, it's not just wisdom of, I'm going to learn what God says to do and not do. It's also wisdom wrapped up in this love for God, knowing how much he loves me. And if I have this proper understanding of his faithfulness and his steadfast love, his consistent, never-ending love for me, guess what it's going to do to my heart? It's going to give me a desire to follow him more closely each and every day. And then it says in verse five, to do this with your heart, trust in the Lord with all your heart. How many of you have heard verse five before? Anybody ever said it to yourself or someone else just you trying to 
you're in a difficult situation, you're like, I've heard this Bible verse before, right? Sometimes we do that, we get nervous, and we don't know what to say, so we just start throwing out every verse we've ever memorized before. We're like, one of these will stick and help, right? So verse five is beautiful. It's wise, it's smart, it's correct. Trust the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own what? Understanding. Another way of saying it, don't lean on listening to your own heart, doing it your own way. Who are we to lean on and trust in? God, right? Now, it's in the Bible, you have it memorized, you know that sounds good. How many of you agree with verse five? You're like, yeah, that would make life better, right? And we're all in church, and so we're like, hey, yeah, this is good, this is the right thing. But what I brought up earlier, it's one thing to hear God's word. Some of you already said you got it memorized. It's not a hard verse to memorize. It's one thing to memorize it, right? And it's a totally other thing to do what? Go out there the rest of the week and live out verse five. And this becomes the the real struggle of how do we get true wisdom in our lives? Yes, there is the studying God's word, memorizing God's word, putting it into our hearts, knowing the story of Jesus and his love for us, all those things Proverbs tells us to do, and those are good, right? Here's the real rub of how to get wisdom in your life. We call it repentance. And it is not fun to do. Because repentance also involves admitting, I am a fool sometimes. How many of you go through your week wanting to admit to other people you're a fool? Anybody told somebody that before? Like been in the inter- job interview, and they're like, tell us about your weakens- weaknesses. And you're like, well, I'm a fool. Anybody ever thrown that one out? <laughs> I mean, it's biblical. Probably not going to help you get the job, <laughs> right? We, we, we have this resistance to what? Repentance. We have this resistance to admitting my ways are not the best ways. My heart doesn't know best. It's hard for us to confess and admit as human beings that are filled with the sin of pride. If you go all the way back to the Garden of Eden, the first sin, the first fall of our parents, Adam and Eve, is wrapped up in what? I know better than God's ways. I know better than God's word. I know better than God's commands. I'm just going to listen to my heart. And then verse six says, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. If you look at the story of Genesis where Adam and Eve fall into temptation and fall into sin, what the Hebrew really says is, Eve looked at the fruit and thought it was good for making her wise in her eyes. See, from the very beginning as human beings, we've had a hard time with understanding what true wisdom is. And we want to be wise in our own eyes. We want to be wise in the eyes of people around us, right? That's why you go with the trends. That's why you go with the peer pressure, because what? Everybody will tell you, wow, you're so good. You're so smart. You're so insightful. And if we can do it ourselves, we'll get even more praise, right? Because I didn't even need anybody else's help. I was able to do it myself. I just knew. And Proverbs is saying, well, if you want real wisdom in your life, yeah, you need to know God's commands. You need to know his ways. You need to know the story of scripture that tells you about his steadfast faithfulness and love towards a bunch of fools like you and me. But more than that, we also have to repent of all the times we are foolish, of all the times we don't trust the Lord with all our heart. It sounds great, it sounds wonderful, it sounds beautiful, but we don't do it, right? It says, and lean not on your own understanding, right? So what is that picture of, right? You've ever seen something that's leaning, right? You ever play with like Legos or Jenga or any kind of things where it's all leaning and it's all depending on that, like that one little brick, right? That one little thing is holding this whole structure together, right? And if you move it, what's gonna happen? 
Everything collapses, everything falls apart. And this is what we do in our life, right? When it says we're leaning on our own understanding, it's not just this idea of I'm taking a breather. I'm just gonna lean a little bit because the sermon's getting long. Right, no, it's I'm going to lead on this and if this thing doesn't work, if this thing doesn't come through for me, if it collapses, guess what I think will happen? My whole world will collapse. It'll all fall apart. And so Proverbs is saying, you can build your life on your own understanding, on your own wisdom, by listening to your own heart. You can lean everything in it on that. But it will collapse on you. And it will fall apart. And you already admitted this to me earlier when you said, looking back, I've made some dumb choices. You leaned on your own understanding, and it didn't work out 100% of the time for you. So Proverbs is saying, if you want a wise life, if you want a life that brings you God's favor and peace and goodness and blessing, then build your life and lean your whole life on him and his ways rather than your own. And here's the real hard part about preaching this as a pastor, is that I'm talking to a bunch of Christians. I love you, but here's what I mean by that. As Christians, what do we say? We believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, right? We, we would agree with God's, what, whatever God's word says, we're in agreement with, right? Well, we don't live it out, but we are like, it's a, <laughs> got some good intentions to listen to it, right? Amen? Okay, we're gonna say, well, so our response is gonna be, what do you mean, Solomon and Proverbs? What do you mean, Pastor Mark? I've already done what? Based my life on Jesus. But here's what he says with all of your heart, in all of your ways. We have a tendency, especially as Christians, to divide our lives out. We will say, I have my spiritual life with Jesus over here, and then I have my real life over here. We do this all the time. Right? We will see, we will even ask people, oh, how's your spiritual life doing? How's your faith life doing? Here's the reality. The Bible does not have those two categories. The Bible just says you have your life. So we'd be like, well, no, in the, in the church area, in the spiritual area, I'm going to lean on Jesus because that just makes sense, right? Like what, what else is, why would else would you lean on something else, Right? But in the rest of the world, when I get to work tomorrow, when I get that phone call or that email that I gotta deal with later this week, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna bother God, that's not my spiritual life, that's my work life. That's my regular life, so guess what I'm gonna do? Anybody else wanna admit this with me? I'm gonna lean on my own understanding nine times out of 10. Maybe there's a one week a year where I'm real humble. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna throw this one up to the Lord. But what does Proverbs say? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Meaning, <laughs> your all means all in the Bible, both in Hebrew and Greek. I always get asked, well, what does it mean by all? Because what do you want? We want to wiggle ju just a little bit of my life belongs to me and not the Lord. This piece of my heart belongs to me and not God. And Proverbs is saying, if you want real wisdom in your life, wisdom that leads to straight paths, wisdom that leads to peace, wisdom that leads to success and goodness in the sight of God, then you're gonna have to trust him with your whole heart, all of it, not just part of it, not just on Sundays, not just the spiritual aspects, but all of it. Proverbs is saying, if you want wisdom that leads to peace, and goodness and success and favor in the sight of God, which I think we would all sign up for, that kind of life. And he says, you're gonna need to acknowledge him in all your ways. In other words, saying, in all your paths, in all your steps, in every area of your life. See, true wisdom is about our relationship with God. 
acknowledging his ways, putting him first in our lives, putting his commandments and his promises on tablets of our hearts. But the way we live it out, the way we put it into practice and receive its blessings and benefits in our lives is by repenting and saying, my whole heart and all my ways belongs to God. And whichever way he wants to lead me, whichever path he wants me to walk down, I'm going to follow him. And resisting at all times the urge to listen to my own heart, to lean on my own understandings. So verse seven, be not wise in your own eyes. My advice to you is good luck. (laughs) That's hard to do. Be not wise in your own eyes. And then verse seven, though, gives us, how do we do that? Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Turn away from foolishness. So how do I humble myself and be wise in the eyes of the Lord rather than trying to be wise in my own eyes or the ways of the world? Proverbs saying again, fear the Lord. Love the Lord, revere the Lord and his ways. And he will give you wisdom. And he will give you, as Proverbs 3 says, he will give you his steadfastness, he will give you his faithfulness, he will give you his peace and success, he will give you his favor. But the only way you and I are ever gonna get that way of life in our lives is if we listen to what Proverbs says, we listen to what God's word says, and we say, my whole heart and all my steps and all my ways belong to Jesus and not myself. They belong to Jesus and not the world. As Proverbs says, remember his faithfulness and his steadfast love for you, and then acknowledge him in all your ways. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we give thanks for your faithfulness and steadfast love to us. We give thanks for your word that it speaks into every area of our lives. Holy Spirit, give us a spirit of humility and repentance so that we may return from evil, we may turn from our own foolishness and lean on the word of God and his ways in our lives and in our whole hearts. In your name we pray, amen.